If you haven't done so yet, make sure that you pause the video and reattempt the question on your own before listening on. Here we have a physical pendulum with a small amplitude. A physical pendulum is a kind of pendulum that's just a little bit more complex than a point particle going back and forth. A physical pendulum is made up of some wider distribution of mass other than just a point particle. In this case, that distribution of mass is in the form of this thin brass disc here. The rod itself doesn't have any mass, but indeed the disc does. And the equation that governs the period of a physical pendulum is shown on the screen. And what we want to do first is talk about h. Now, h is going to be the distance from the pivot to the center of mass. So in this diagram, the pivot point is up here. The center of mass would be the geometric center of this brass disc because it has a uniform distribution of mass. Remember, the rod has no mass, so we don't have to take that into account. But we have the center of mass here, and we're just trying to figure out an expression for h. Now, again, h would be measured from that center of mass all the way up to the rotation axis. We can see from the diagram that the distance from the rotation axis down to the top of that brass disc is L, and then the radius of the brass disc itself is lowercase r. So hopefully you can see in the picture that H is simply going to equal that distance L plus r, and that's what we're gonna end up plugging in for H into the equation. Now we also need to come up with an expression for I, which is the moment of inertia of this brass disc. Now, ordinarily a brass disc or any kind of disc would rotate about its center of mass. And in that situation, the moment of inertia would equal one half times the mass of the disc times its radius squared. Now again, that's if it's rotating about its center of mass, but it's not rotating about its center of mass. It's rotating about a different point, in this case, the rotation axis. So according to the parallel axis theorem, we would actually have to add an extra term onto our moment of inertia, and that extra term is going to equal the mass multiplied by h squared. Now, once again, h is L plus r, so we can actually back up, and for h, we can fill in that term L plus r like so. So we are going to substitute this expression in for the i in the period equation, and we will substitute this expression in for h into the period equation. Once we have that set up, we can begin to fill in the values stated in the problem. The problem did state that the period of this pendulum is going to equal two seconds. It told us that the radius of the brass disc is 15 centimeters, which of course is 0.15 meters. The question notes that g is 9.8 meters per second squared. And finally, the mass of the disc is one kilogram. So we're just gonna scoot down the page and we're gonna fill in those known values. Now our goal in this problem is to find that length L, so we're gonna highlight that in green so we know what we're up against. We can begin to simplify the formula a little bit. These ones in the equation don't matter because multiplying anything by one doesn't change its value, so we're just gonna kinda of get rid of those. Next, we'll divide both sides by two pi. To get rid of the square on both sides, we will square, or the, excuse me, to get rid of the square root on both sides, we'll square both sides. The left-hand side can be inputted into a calculator, and this term here can also be inputted into a calculator. Next, we can multiply both sides of the equation by this term here. We can distribute the 0.101 to the 9.8, get that value, and whatever that is, then we'll distribute that twice into the parentheses. Next, we will multiply out this term here by writing it twice and foiling. We will then move everything to the right-hand side so that we can get the equation equal to zero. So you're going to subtract that term from both sides, subtract that term from both sides. We are left with the quadratic equation in a standard form, so we have to use the quadratic formula. The coefficient of L squared is going to be our A value. The coefficient of L is going to be B, and then the constant will be C. So we're gonna go ahead and plug those into the quadratic formula. So there we have it. We wanna use the positive in the formula because if you use the negative, then the length turns out to be negative. So our X, or actually our L, because the original quadratic equation we wrote down had a variable of L, will turn out to be approximately 0 0.831. When we, again, we use the positive in the quadratic formula, this will be in meters. And this indeed is the correct answer to the question.